The Ho-Chunk Native American tribe name means people of the sacred voice. They were a dominant tribe in the Wisconsin region with a population of around several thousand people. The Ho-Chunk originated along the east coast and then migrated west. The Ho-Chunk suffered severe population losses in the 17th century due to severe storms, epidemics and competition for resources. By the early 1800s, they faced further catastrophes when they were forced off their lands by the encroaching Europeans. However, the following story is about the Europeans that settled on their land and the bizarre events that happened to them when many of the citizens' behaviour became both bizarre and erratic. These events happened in the 1890s and are chronicled with dates, places, times, but no motives. There are many newspaper clippings about the events. Without the clippings, you would not believe that this now pleasant town had a decade filled with weird, mysterious happenings. With these horrific events happening so rapidly, with such horror, you have to ask, did the Ho-Chunk tribe leave a curse when they were forced off their lands, or was it just the case of collective madness? When the Europeans settled in this small wild region of Wisconsin and named the town Black River Falls, the town itself was actually founded in 1839 by a sawmill operator called Jacob Spaulding. Following that, the town became a hub for the sawmill industry, attracting more people into the area, many of them of German or Norwegian descent. The population would thrive throughout the 1800s until around 1890 when the town suddenly undertook sinister overtones where the quaint, idyllic community started to suffer disasters and madness where people were losing their lives in unusual circumstances. In the years that followed, the situation became progressively worse. The origins of this horror started after years of freakish cold weather, forcing the closure of many sawmills. The abominable weather then escalated into floods, disease, crop failure, resulting in starvation. Over a very short time span, the once idyllic town had deteriorated so badly, it is said that some of the people supposedly put their faith in the dark side of Christianity by practicing certain witchcrafts and devil worship. It appears that the sudden onset of a volatile environment, joblessness and depression led to paranoia and superstition, resulting in grotesque and bizarre behavior. The violence began slowly and randomly then escalated to people either taking someone's life or taking their own life. From an outsider's view, it appears that everyone was losing their minds, with the town spiraling downwards into madness and chaos. Insanity had now crept in with the townsfolk displaying weird and odd behaviour. One woman set herself on fire, claiming that she'd had an infection on her back that she could not get rid of. Another person went into a trance-like state, then for some inexplicable reason was buried alive and then disinterred to find that she chewed off half her hand. A farmer had decapitated all of his chickens and then set fire to the farmhouse claiming he was possessed by Satan. A young boy suddenly went into a trance-like state and did not recover for months. A well-renowned opera singer had taken up residence in the town and for some inexplicable reason started making Ouija boards. She was later found wandering around searching for live chickens to eat. At the same time all of this mayhem was taking place, young men were roaming around injuring livestock. Another person started to light fires everywhere whilst one woman was running around breaking as many windows as she could. As if this was not enough collective insanity, other people ran around town screaming that they were being harassed by demons. The whole town had become a state of confusion and uproar, looking as if everyone was in a state of mental plague that would cause people to take their own lives. A farmer locked himself in his barn screaming, Here I go and the Lord go with me, and then lit a stick of dynamite. One family, through the kindness of their heart, took in a homeless man and as they were sat at the table ready to eat, the man pulled out a gun and took his own life right in front of them. Another woman in a blind panic ran into the woods and attempted to take her own life with a towel around her neck. Another poor soul just lay down on some railroad tracks and in the nick of time was rescued by four men who were able to put him off, wherein he just vanished. 
The madness appeared to go on and on, where several people walked out into freezing conditions and perished, where others were found starved at home, even though there was ample food nearby. A man walked into a pub and drank and drank until he passed away. Another man passed away at the same bar by stuffing his face with cigarette butts. Then another man nearby ordered a drink and then took his own life with a gun. As all of this total bedlam was mounting, people were regularly being dragged off to asylums. The whole town appeared to have just lost it. A mother claimed she was being stalked by devils and then threw her three children into Lake St. Croix. Two young boys ran away from home and went to a farm, took a farmer's life and then just stayed at his property. The farmer's brother then came to check on his welfare only to be fired upon and when a policeman arrived, he too lost his life. They were eventually apprehended. Another family took in a homeless man which ended up costing them their lives and then the man took his own life. A father critically attacked his own family while another divorced man seriously assaulted his ex-wife in the town square. Many people lost their lives in that horrific violent decade and in such a small community. It appears that the horrors lasted until a little after 1900, where the town then settled into some sort of normality. The evil had finally passed. There was no answer as to what caused this town to descend into such darkness and catastrophe. Was it the initial setbacks with extreme weather conditions that brought about the mass hysteria? Did the Native Americans really put a curse on the land leading to that bleak and violent period in the small town of Black River Falls? Outside observers and the media claimed that the town had been caught up in some peculiar melee amongst the local population where people in the town claimed to be haunted by ghosts, possessed by devils and terrorised by teenage outlaws and arsonists. In 1973, American historian Michael Lisi wrote a book titled Wisconsin Death Trip. The book was a collection of old newspaper clippings, photos and collected commentaries. The original photos had a macabre quality, with others showing a sense of dread and eeriness. Other photos show normal scenes of children performing in school plays, local musicians posing with their instruments, midwives displaying newly born infants. But if you look deeper into these photos, you cannot help but feel a sense of dread, where the children's expressions seem to reflect a wariness and the musicians take on unusual smiles. Today, Black River Falls has a population of about 3,600 people and is once again a haven for visitors. Most of the visitors would be totally unaware of the town's dark and sinister past. You would think that a town that has historically suffered so much trauma and horror would leave a strong residual imprint behind. You would not be surprised to hear that there have been reports of hauntings and paranormal activity throughout the town, where it is regularly visited by paranormal investigators. The following account was given to an investigator where they claimed that within six months of moving into their apartment, weird things started happening. The couple felt the presence and imprint of someone sitting on their bed. On another occasion, when one of them had turned on the hallway light, they suddenly came face to face with a full-bodied apparition of a middle-aged woman. The apparition quickly vanished, but the apparition was visible long enough that they were still able to get a really good look at her. More recently, their cat was staring at the wall near the ceiling, opposite the living room closet. They went to see what the cat was looking at and saw a yellowish coloured orb float across the ceiling and disappear into the closet. The cat then walked to the closet and proceeded to stare at the door. When they opened the door, the cat ran away and the orb had disappeared. 